When we hear the word vocation today, we are apt to think of that word in one of two contexts. Uh, many folks simply equate vocation with job or occupation. After all, we have vocational technical schools that uh, equip people for particular jobs or occupations. In high school, we have uh, vocational guidance counselors whose work it is to help uh, young folks uh, kind of discern their own gifts and how those gifts might fit with particular occupations. And so we end up reducing vocation to an occupation or to a job. Or if we think about vocation in a kind of religious context, we think perhaps in terms of vocation as a calling to be a priest or a monk or a nun that was typical in Luther's day, or perhaps in our day we would think of it about as a calling to church work, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, uh, so forth. But actually in the scripture, vocation is much broader than occupation. To be sure, occupation is part of vocation, but vocation in the scripture embraces all that we are and all that we do. So that Paul says in Colossians, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And so there's no area of my life that is finally out from under the umbrella of vocation. It is a calling uh, to faith, and then it is a calling uh, to a life of love for the neighbor in the world. I always think it is kind of interesting when we have someone from outside of the Lutheran tradition looking in on us and giving us a particular perspective. And this is what Mark Knoll did a few years ago in an article published in First Things entitled The Lutheran Difference. And he has a lot to say about what makes Lutherans distinctive in North America, both from other Protestants and from Roman Catholicism on the one hand, and from uh, what we might simply call kind of civil religion. And he begins the article by saying that Lutherans are extraordinarily ordinary and remarkably unremarkable. Now, when you first read that, you might get visions in your head of Lake Wobegon and Pastor Ingvist and, and so forth, and think that's really kind of a slap at Lutherans. But as Noel unfolds his argument, is, is, he's actually saying something very positive. He was saying that Lutherans attend to the ordinary things of life, like family, uh, work, congregation, uh, life in community. That Lutherans have a doctrine of original sin, which really kind of tempers our perspective on things. We realize that this world will continue to be sinful. Things will not really improve. And, um, and we learn to live with that, doing the best we can in service, uh, in service to the neighbor in these ordinary places. Luther's understanding of the two kingdoms is first of all posited on the fact that God is at work in the world in two different ways. In the kingdom or the government of his left hand, he is at work in the world uh, to keep creation from simply careening off into chaos. He works there through police, through soldiers, through judges, through executioners even, uh, not to establish that eternal righteousness that saves, but simply to keep life in this world genuinely humane and civil. God, on the other hand, works through the government or the kingdom of his right hand, not simply to curb evil, but to deal with the source of evil, that is sin. And so he works through the kingdom of his right hand to forgive sin, uh, to give life and salvation, uh, through faith in the one who is our king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the Christian lives, lives in both kingdoms at one and the same time. He lives in that place where there's an overlap between the kingdom of this world 
and the kingdom of our God in his Christ. One of the great scholars of the Lutheran doctrine of vocation was the Swedish theologian Gustav Wingren. He wrote a book, by the way, which is very helpful, Luther on Vocation. And near the end of his life, he preached a sermon on the familiar biblical story of the healing of the paralytic. And he said there are really two miracles in this, parab or in this miracle. Uh, the one is that a man whose limbs were tightened and paralyzed now is by virtue of Jesus' word of forgiveness made to walk. There's divine healing. But he says there's a second miracle that we often overlook. And he said the second miracle is the man took up his pallet and he went home. He didn't go off to a monastery. He didn't go and, and, and start an evangelistic crusade to tell people about how he had been healed. He didn't go on the Oprah Winfrey show. He didn't build a shrine. He went home. And it's in the context of his daily life that he lives out the new life that God in Christ had given him. And that really kind of summarizes what we understand by the doctrine of vocation. We receive from God all good things, faith by faith alone. And then as we have been given these good gifts, we share them in the places where he has planted us to live and to work in this world.